Oh, looks so good. And there you have it, your layered strawberry cornmeal cake. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, hold on. Mmm. Yo, what up, hammies? It's your boy, BP Ham, and today we're finally back with another cooking slash baking episode, and today we're making a strawberry layer cake. This recipe is from Claire Saffitz's book, Dessert Person. It's basically a layered strawberry shortcake, so we got cake, cream, strawberry, and I mean, what's not to love? And I'm really excited to try this out, so let's get started. For this recipe, you're gonna need all-purpose flour, sugar, cornmeal, buttermilk, strawberries, kosher salt, baking powder, baking soda, heavy whipping cream, vanilla extract, butter, eggs, and lemon. So first things first, we're going to soak the cornmeal because it's a little tough and we're gonna put it in the buttermilk and then that'll soften it up. Just pour this straight up in there. And we're also gonna add the vanilla extract. Give that a good stir. It's gonna feel a little thick in there, but just keep on stirring it. Once you got that stirred up, we're gonna put this to the side and prepare the rest of the ingredients. <clears throat> so now we're gonna to mix together our dry ingredients. We got 200 grams of flour here. We're gonna put in half a teaspoon of salt. One, t what is this? One tablespoon of baking powder and half a teaspoon of baking soda. Whisk that together until you got a nice homogeneous mixture. Be careful if you have a small bowl like me to not spill it outside. And then set that aside. I would say this is a pretty simple recipe. It's just a lot of mixing, not too many difficult steps. Maybe the only difficult thing will be cutting the cake into two layers um, once we bake it, but nothing too crazy. Now we're gonna grate a lemon to get some lemon zest. For this, you're gonna need a microplane. I love this tool, it's very useful. If you do not have one, I recommend getting a microplane. You can use it for all different types of things like garlic, ginger, lemon, any kind of citrus, and it adds a nice zing to your dishes. You can either roll your citrus across it or just use it in your right hand and do it this way as well. I like to go like this because I like to see where I've already grated. We need two tablespoons of lemon zest and you only want to get the yellow part. Once you get to the white, you don't want to use that because that part's bitter. This thing is super sharp, so make sure you watch out for your fingers. So you can see how we got most of the flesh off and only the white part of the lemons remaining. One large lemon should get you about two teaspoons of lemon zest. So now that we've got that zested, we're gonna bring out the big boy, the stand mixer to finish out this recipe. Make sure you keep this lemon because we're gonna need the lemon juice later to help macerate the strawberries. Oh, so heavy. So we got our stand mixer out. What we're going to do is combine the sugar and the lemon zest so that we get like a lemony sugar. And you can do this with a lot of different um, zests or even vanilla beans and you can have like a flavored sugar. We're gonna add 150 grams of sugar and that fresh lemon zest. And then just get your clean hands and you're going to massage that lemon into the sugar so those oils infuse into the sugar. And you're gonna get like a wet sand kind of texture um, once you're done doing this. Just continue to massage all that lemon zest and it's gonna smell so good. All right, so I think we're good there. Uh, give your hands a quick wash. We're gonna use the paddle attachment. Um, so put that on your stand mixer. Make sure it's secure because I always mess that up. To this, you're gonna add 10 tablespoons of butter. Put that right in. Make sure it's room temperature so that it easily incorporates once you're mixing it. Pull this up. Oh God, oh, the other way. And then we're gonna beat this on medium high until that incorporates, scraping down the sides every so often. As you can see, it incorporated pretty well. Uh, we wanna mix together the sides and we really want this to be light and fluffy is the key to this cake. Just scrape down the sides. And we're gonna let this keep going for a couple more minutes. All right, so I think we're good there. If you can see, it's become really white and pale. Scrape down the sides one more time, and then we're gonna incorporate an egg one at a time. So we're just gonna crack one egg into here. And then we're gonna slowly beat that in. Add in our second egg. 
And then just let this go for another one to two minutes. So that's mixed in. Uh, we're gonna scrape the sides down. Make sure you get the bottom of the bowl uh, so you make sure everything's mixed in really well. Now what we're gonna do is bring back over our wet and dry mixtures from earlier and we're gonna alternate them. And what that does is help um, better incorporate the ingredients into our final mixture. Start with dry and we're gonna do this on a low speed. We're gonna get a third of this mixture and pour that straight in. Let this fully incorporate before you add in the wet mixture. I think we're good there. Now add in half of your wet mixture. What you're gonna do is just keep alternating until you're done and every so often get your spatula and wipe down the sides. A third more of the dry. The last bit of your wet. And it smells so good, the lemon is just hitting me and I cannot wait to eat this cake. Now add in the last of your dry and you're done. I'm gonna stop this, use my spatula one more time. Give it one more go. All right, and we're done. For this recipe, you're gonna need some kind of nine inch cake pan. Right here, we got a spring form pan. You can use a high side, probably two inch or so cake pan. But this is a spring form pan, which you can, oh, that was, which you can unlatch and the top comes off so you can easily push your cake up. Like technology, you know? This makes things a lot easier, but you can use a regular cake pan if that's all you got. So we need to prepare our cake tin, and then we're just gonna use some parchment paper, cut a circle under it, and then line it. I just get a sheet of parchment paper as big as a tin, rip that off. I put the pan on top of the parchment paper, get a pencil or whatever you have, and then just create some kind of marking or guide and then we put it in, we'll just use the other side so we don't get lead poisoning. <laughs> Grab some scissors and just cut it up. And I just fold it in half so I don't have to make too many cuts. And usually cut on the inside of the line so that it fits within your cake pan. And it doesn't need to be perfect because I know I ain't cutting this well. <laughs> and voila, you got yourself a circle that you're just gonna put straight in there. Okay, so we don't want things to stick up in here. So we're gonna get some butter. I just get a stick of butter, cut the end off so the butter is exposed and we're just going to butter the inside of our pan. Make sure you get the sides. And then if you can't get it all the way around because the butter's all weird, just get a paper towel and just spread that butter all the way to the edges so that your cake does not stick. And then put that parchment paper down inside and then I like to butter the top of the parchment paper as well. I forgot to preheat my oven, so make sure you preheat your oven to 350 on the center rack before you start doing this whole thing. But now that we got our cake lined, our cake pan lined, and we got our batter finished, we're going to pour this straight up in here. Scrape all that off the sides because you don't want to waste any cake. Once you got your cake in the pan, you're going to slide it around so you got an even layer. Kind of spread it out on top so it's all nice and even. Just circular movements with your spatula or your offset spatula, whatever you got. So you got a nice even layer on the top. Tap it on the bench a few times, let those air bubbles come out. We're gonna wait for our oven to preheat and then stick this bad boy in there for about 40 to 50 minutes. While we're waiting for the cake to bake, we're gonna start preparing our strawberries. So here we got two pounds of fresh washed strawberries. What we're gonna do is hold the strawberries. So we just wanna cut off the stem portion of it. What I get is like a paring knife or get what you have. What I like to do is just take a slit in on both sides at like a 45 degree angle and then kind of pull that out. And if you're really lazy, you could just really just cut off the top, but you won't get as much yield that way. Preheated oven. Take this cake mixture, put it straight up in there on the center rack for 40 to 50 minutes. We're gonna want a really golden brown color, so it's gonna be in there for a while. Okay. 
And to be honest, this part's really tedious, so if you got some friends or, you know, kids or whoever, just get them to help you do it. <laughs> and if you're doing this and you're like, oh, it doesn't look good, you're gonna cut these up anyway, so no one cares. Last one. All right, so quick tip, if you have a wood cutting board, strawberries may stain it, so I usually just get another kind of plastic cutting board so I don't ruin my wood ones. So now that we have all of these hold, uh, we're gonna get the five largest ones because they're gonna act as support between the, the layers of the cake or the layer. Um, so I'm just gonna grab the five largest ones we have. These ones are pretty small, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. Da -da 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 -da. So you want to get ones that are pretty similar in shape or height so that it's all the same height, but if not, you can just trim off um, your strawberries until they're the same height. But these are pretty good. I'm going to put these ones off to the side so I don't accidentally mistake them. So what we're going to do is cut the strawberries lengthwise, like one fourth of an inch, and the small ones we're just going to cut down in half, and that's going to give you some different textures and different looks for your end cake. So just grab your strawberry, literally just cut it probably in threes or fours. And these little ones just cut in half. Probably get about four slices per regular strawberry would be the best. Last one. Now that we've finished cutting the strawberries, we're gonna do what you call macerate them, which is just a fancy term for saying, put them with some sugar, and it's gonna let the juices come out of the strawberries and be really delicious. Adding those strawberries back into the bowl. Oh no. Man overboard. E. All right, do it a little nicer than I did, but whatever works. What we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that lemon that we zested earlier, do some rolling rolling action to get the juices flowing, cut that in half. We just need about two teaspoons of lemon. So I'm just gonna eyeball this, squeeze like some lemon in about two tablespoons. So one squeeze, two squeeze, make sure that your seeds don't get in there like mine did. Ah. Then we're gonna sprinkle about 50 grams of sugar over this. Mix that around so the sugar is incorporated over all of the strawberries. And this is going to naturally help the juices release from the strawberries and you're going to get some like syrupy consistency. You're essentially creating a strawberry simple syrup because what's happening is those juices are releasing from the strawberries, mixing with that sugar and creating that syrupy consistency. You can set this aside, do this ahead, put it in the fridge. Um, and use it. I mean, this is great. Anything you can put on some ice cream, any kind of dessert. You can even buy little shortcakes and put this on top and it's delicious. So I used to do that all the time as a kid. We're done here. We're gonna cover this, set it aside while our cake bakes. Oh, the cake baking and it smells so good. I'm so excited to eat this. So it's been about 42-ish minutes and I think it's done. So we're gonna pull it out. Smells good. It's nice and golden brown on the top. You can see the edges of the cake have pulled away from the sides of the pan. And when you stick a bamboo skewer or like a toothpick in the center, it comes out clean. Let this cool in the pan for about 20 minutes before we take it out because, you know, we don't want it to crumble or anything like that. And we put the cream on a hot cake, it's just gonna melt and be a mess. So I wanna make sure this is adequately cooled before we start assembling. So while we wait for the cakes to cool, we're gonna make some whipped cream. Uh, you don't wanna do this too early because it will deflate as time passes, but I'm gonna make a sweet cream, um, adding some powdered sugar and vanilla extract because I like a little extra sweetness. So we got two cups of heavy whipping cream. We're going to put that right into our stand mixer. I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon to two tablespoons of powdered sugar. You can use granulated sugar, but that may um, cause a more grainy end result because the crystals are harder. And then I'm gonna add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. You're gonna use your whisk attachment, place that on. We're gonna start it on a low speed and go up to about a medium, medium high speed. And we're going for soft peaks here, so just watch it. We don't wanna take it too far. <laughs> So 
So our mixture is done. You can see if you pull out your whisk attachment and you turn it over and it kind of falls over like that, that's like a soft peak. So you know you're there and you're ready to chill this while you're waiting to assemble your cake. And don't worry if you over whip it. I've over whipped many creams in my day. You can still use it. It might not be as good, but I mean, it's been about 20 minutes. Our cake has cooled and we're ready to remove it from the pan. So you're just gonna grab a paring knife or some knife, butter knife, whatever you got, and you're going to go around the cake to release it from the sides. Should be fairly simple, nothing too crazy. And now if you have a springform pan, you're just going to unlatch this latch and it's going to pop away from the bottom. If you have a regular pan, just turn it over. Here we go. And then you see it just pulls right out like that. Turn it over, get it out, should come straight out. Turn that onto a baking tray. From here, I'm just going to take off that parchment, which should come off fairly easily because we buttered both sides. Got a nice cooked cake, like how caramelized that is. All right, so we got our completely cooled cake here. As you can see, it's really dark and you really wanna make sure that you bake the cake all the way through. And it's okay if it gets a little dark and caramelized on the sides because this is a very fragile cake and you want to make sure that it's not crumbling when you are assembling it. The hardest part about this recipe is splitting the layers. If you have one of those fancy things that just slide across it, you can use that, but we're gonna use a serrated knife and what you're gonna do is just look halfway in between and you're gonna make little slits across the whole cake and then we're gonna slide our serrated knife straight through. So get your knife and make sure you're on eye level so that you can see halfway in between and just start making um, little cuts across your cake. Try your best to get it as even as you can but if not, it'll still taste good. All right, so we got little cuts across the entire cake and now what I'm gonna do is very level I'm going to just slide my knife across while turning the cake. And eventually you'll have two separate cake layers. Perfect. So now we're gonna assemble our cake. We got our cake stand here, and we're gonna put that bottom layer down and it's gonna be like a cake sandwich. So we got bottom layer, strawberries, cream, Cake, cream, strawberry. I want to be very careful. These cake layers are very fragile. So just put that in the center of your cake. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your strawberries and you're gonna place it on probably about two thirds of them all the way to the edge. And the strawberries have created this really nice syrup. Um, and you wanna make sure you get that into the cake layer because that's what's gonna make it nice and moist. Place those strawberries right on. Ah. And then don't forget those five strawberries you had before, which I almost did. Um, we're gonna place those, one in the center and then four on the outside so that um, when we put the cream on and put the top layer, the filling doesn't like spurt out when you cut it. So just stick one in the center and then just some on each of the four corners. And this is gonna act as like a support for the cake. And now you're gonna add your whipped cream layer, about half of it. Gently put that on the top. Oh, looks so good. And I would push it too close to the edge, but not all the way to the edge because you still wanna see the strawberries. So this is what it looks like so far. And now we're gonna carefully place the top layer with the cut side down. Now we're gonna finish off with some cream and some more strawberries. So put the rest of your cream on the top. Bring that to the edge and you're just gonna create some swooshes up in there. So now we're gonna put our remaining strawberries on the top, more so in the center than pulling them out to the sides because then it's gonna fall over and droop um, across the cake. And so we're just gonna put them right in the middle. And there you have it, your layered strawberry cornmeal cake. So now we're gonna slice into this bad boy. I have a feeling it's gonna be really messy, so be very careful when you're cutting it. Nervous. Oh yeah. Oh God, here it goes. Moment of truth. Eee. 
I can pull that out. Ooh, not bad. We got that slice there. Now we're ready to taste test. I mean, look at that. With the layers, I put some extra strawberries on, but we got moist cake, strawberries, cream, cake, strawberries, cream. I mean, what's not to love? So we're gonna try this out. Ooh. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, hold on. Mmm. Wow. It is a really good cake. It's very reminiscent of a strawberry shortcake, but it has a lot of extra texture because we use cornmeal in there instead of just flour. And it adds a nice bite. It does give you a little bit of a cornbread kind of feeling, but it, it works. If you don't like cornbread, you might not like this cake, but I really like that added depth of um, crunch in your mouth. Mmm. Oh my God. I probably could eat this whole slice and more, but should it? But it's really good, that balance of cream and strawberry and cake. I personally like a sweeter cream, so I'm glad I added in that powdered sugar and vanilla extract. I think it adds a really nice flavor, but if you're not too big on like sweet desserts, you could just omit that um, powdered sugar. Mmm, I should not eat this whole thing. I know strawberries may not be in season right now, but if you can get a hand on it, use them. If not, use blackberries, raspberries, any kind of berries that you want to use in it, you could substitute out for the strawberries. Other than that, it's a really great recipe by Claire Saffitz, and I'll definitely be making it again when I don't have to pay $10 for two pounds of strawberries. Um, but that's the price you pay for living in New York in strawberry off season. But if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like and comment below on what you would like me to cook or bake next. I'll be back home with my parents next week and we have a bunch of recipes we're ready to film. So super excited for that. Other than that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.